views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Demartini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show that's coming up right next. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey everybody, welcome. Welcome to the welcome to the show. I mean, I am so thrilled to be connecting with all of you. I am Dr. Pat. I'm joined by the amazing Atana Badilli joining me here today. Energy's Energy Works Radio with Atana and me. And you know, he and I have gotten together so that we can take a look at What are some of the things that we can help folks with this year? And the reason that this is so super important, and Atana is going to talk about this here in a minute, is because he and I are experiencing something extraordinary and challenging. I'll speak for myself and challenging in so many ways. And we don't think we're alone. You know, we really don't. We think that there is an energy or something going on in the world. But, you know, Atana knew this early on at an early age. And, you know, there are some things that we can look at in life and know for ourselves and have a clear sense of, you know, sometimes there's some of the simpler things, sometimes they're more, they're more difficult. But other times, or at least for myself, a lot of the time, I'm not sure that I know everything that needs to be known. But the question isn't that. The question is, what am I willing to accept? And what is acceptance? Today, Atana and I are going to talk about the energy of acceptance, how to apply acceptance into your daily life. Now, for many of you, uh, you know Atana, the fabulous work he does. You know the Atana Method. And by the way, you can go to atanamethod.com, A-T-A-A-N-A, method.com, because this is a time where things are expanding and growing, and sometimes it's really daunting for us. Atana, great to have you here. Welcome to the show, The Energy of Acceptance, right? It's happening. Accept- yeah. <laughs> unacceptable. What can we say? Oh. Um, it's, yeah. it's pretty intense when we, when we go to these experiences and we're realizing that the times that we're going through or that we're experiencing have never been experienced before. So what we are asked, the, the levels of acceptance that we are asked for have never been um, accessed. We have never accessed the depth or the full expansion of exception or, or accepting as we are asked to do right now in this moment or probably tomorrow and the next week and the next year. And if, if our flexibility gets interfered with, we, are, can, we can literally not stretch our heart far enough to accept our expansion, our experiences in life. And that's that's a tricky thing because we constantly have to stay in the moment. We constantly have to stay in our lives aligned and making the decision, I really want to be here. Yeah. Uh, and can we talk about what that means? Uh, uh, and what I mean by that is, do we really want to be here? Boy, this is coming up really loud and clear. Um, you know, and what I mean by that is, there's, do we want to be here in this physical body, in this physical plane? Do we want to be here emotionally? Do we want to be here, you know, logistically, energetically, all of the above, and how do they relate to each other? You know, I had an interesting experience. I reached out to someone that I, I wanted to interview. I was really struck by a recent movie I watched uh, that came on demand, um, and, and, and I was really struck by it, and I wanted to... I wanted to speak with the the screenwriter for it. 
And of course, she's super popular, won all sorts of Oscars and Academy Awards and all of this. And I didn't know whether or not I'd be able to do it, but I wrote an email and, and sent it out to the agency. And I had Donna, in that moment, I had to be willing to accept whatever the outcome was going to be. And as easy as that sounds, I don't know about you, but it's not always easy to accept things like that. Like when it comes back and there's and they're kind of like, we're going to have to pass on this. So, you know, sometimes it's easy to accept our good, but not always. So where are the re- what is the realm of acceptance from your point of view? Well, first of all, we have to accept that the goal is not reached yet. That is a a form of acceptance. That means we have to accept that more energy has to be put into it, into the project, until it's completed, until it's finished. And that requires, of course, perseverance and focus from, from us so that we go the route that we find a perfect solution or ideal solution for it. And that means... We're, we're wanting things to, oh, just work out, and I, I don't want to put any more effort in it and just, you know, just work out the first time, and uh, why should I do any more than that? That should be um, perfectly working out. But if not, if not, it requires more of our um, application of unconditional love towards our lives and ourselves, or love in itself. Because obviously that project is is not filled up enough with magnetic love so that it can attract a solution. And when that's being done, it will automatically start to um, to gear up. And, um, and that's really when you f- will feel traction, where the translation from energy into physical matter actually will take place. And sometimes... We want just things to work out because we don't really want to put more energy into it. What means really literally that we are not loving it. If we are not loving it, why should we try to convince others to love it? Yeah, I mean, you know, this is really kind of the conversation of of really looking at what it is we're being asked to show up as. And how is this affecting us daily? We're talking about the energy of acceptance. You know, some people say, well, let's accept what is. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, what about, Atana, accepting what isn't, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, I mean, it's really interesting. Someone said to me, you know, aren't they the same thing? And I said, well, they might be the same thing if you're talking about an end game, right? Accept what is and accept what isn't. I mean, kind of when you think about that, you know, you point to people out in the world doing different things. But I, my sense is they have different energies. And I wanted to ask you about that. Yeah, first, when we are integrating the energy of acceptance, first, we have to expand into frontiers and dimensions that we have yeah. never before. We have to understand our limitational uh, mental um, concepts. Once we go into the expansion where we truly accept all of existence, including non-existence, the duality as the non-duality, then you really stretch yourself out into the reality because reality is with a lot of the information that we're being fed Uh, we would not know a lot of things. We would be probably thinking in terms much more respectfully of nature, of the elements, of the sun, (laughs) etc. And we would uh, would probably apply certain attributes to certain, um, um, you know, stars or, or planets or nature or elements. And when we get into the into really realizing what is happening right now in this moment in my body, the real most important thing that's happening is breathing. There is the breath. There is the chakra system, the energy system. How is my energy system right now? What is my energy system doing? First, we have to go into the expansion that we even want to take time to look into what even is or not is. How am I feeling today? How, where, what state am I in? Am I balanced? Am I stressed? What am I holding in my body? What patterns? What trauma? Where am I? What am I doing in my system? 
And once I realize that, then I can go into acceptance. The just blind acceptance is nice. It's like a blanket uh, thing, like an umbrella. Yeah, I accept everything and everything that's not. Everything is fine. That's a different, a different approach. It's a good start, but you have to go now into the deeper layers. When you go into the deeper layers of acceptance, you go into the emotional body, the unacceptable the hurt that you're still carrying because somebody hurt you, it's pretty unacceptable to go into, oh, I accept that, that it happened, right? And you go into a place and realize the depth of your being, of your emotional state right now, and then see, can I accept this right now, or am I wanting to project this on somebody else? And, you know, the easiest thing is just drive for 10 minutes in traffic and you see what's going on inside of you. Because... It takes you probably not more than three minutes until you manifest somebody with road rage or somebody <laughs> crazy driving or changing lanes or whatever and kind of interfering with your flow, right? When exactly. You, when you see that, it gives you an idea really what's happening inside of me. Why am I so crowded inside? Right now, there is myself, me, the universe, like me, myself, and I, right? And right. you go to you go into the the depth and really look into yourself why am i so crowded right now why am i so stressed why am i holding this tension why am i why am i feeling i have to have pressure like that and the moment we realize the state that we're in the first thing after that would be accepting the state that you're in first so that you can start changing it here's how i describe that when you start accepting something and you're owning it then you basically have the key to the car you can change the direction where the car is going if you don't access with the key the car the car might be rolling down the road and there's nothing you can do except watching where it's going right you know but atana isn't this really kind of the fascination of what we get to decide for our lives and, you know, what part of acceptance includes letting go of things? You know, this morning I woke up and I, you know, I, I don't necessarily turn on the news. I don't necessarily, you know, plug in. But for today, for some reason, uh, uh, I had looked at something and I, I was shocked about the explosions in Brussels. I mean, so shocked that I remember a point in time in my life, you know, living in in New York City and in the area in New Jersey and what that was like to be under siege or at least feeling like you were. And you can't help but have your hearts go out for people that are are so in a place right now and to take a moment for us to understand that acceptance doesn't always mean that we are condoning things. It's kind of like forgiveness. You know, it doesn't mean that by accepting something, what we're saying is that that is something that is okay. And I want to talk with you about that. Because if we don't accept it for what it is or as it is or in a moment of time, then what happens to the energy of what we hold on to? Now, clearly... You know, this morning, uh, looking at something like that and looking at, you know, my request to interview, you know, somebody that I highly respect and that not happening, that that incident really pales. But what is it about acceptance and how do we how can we how do we apply it in our everyday lives? Let's take a short break, everyone. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Tim Darter. And I'm Steve Kramer. Join us on Spirit Fire Radio. Discover how to add the mechanics of meditation to your day. And watch yourself connect in a whole new way. Find the amazing moments in life's routines that often pass us by. Add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. Tune in each Wednesday at 9 a.m. for your weekly guide to practical mindfulness. And to learn more, visit www.spiritfireradio.com. 
Song of the Heart, Walking the Path of Light, from author and healer Francine Vale is available now. Through Francine's life story, we learn how imperative it is to love one another. Once this simple truth is learned, peace on earth will prevail. Song of the Heart is a life lived and a story told for this purpose. To learn more about Francine and her amazing gifts, or to order your copy of the book today, visit angelsandlightbeings.com. Have you ever tried to make lifestyle changes but had difficulty following through? Imagine what it would be like to get up each morning with energy, clarity, and motivation to tackle the day. If you want to get past limiting barriers that are preventing you from living your best life, join holistic health and wellness coach T. Carrie Mitchell each month on The Dr. Pat Show. Or visit Lifestyle120.com today and start to receive the personal attention you deserve. Holistic Medical Center is where you find it all. A healthy space with doctors who care, see, and listen to the whole you. Hi, this is Dr. Darvish. If you have not found an answer to your chronic symptoms, you will find answers here at Holistic Medical Center. Our doctors find the root cause of your symptoms and guide your body towards healing naturally. We transform lives from within. Visit drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404. A word of caution, if you prefer the status quo and you are not interested in improving every aspect of your life, this book will trigger the shift out of you. The Truth is Funny, Shift Happens is available now. Author Colette Steffen brings the powerful knowledge and life-changing energy and empowerment from the radio airwaves to the pages of her new book. To get your copy in paperback or ebook, visit thetruthisfunny.com today. Sky Siegel co-hosts one of today's most popular psychic shows, Angels and Answers, with Artie Hoffman as she communicates healing messages from the spirit world. These messages can be astounding, enlightening, and life-changing. Born with the God-given talent of inner guidance and the amazing ability to heal, Sky has healed thousands of people. Schedule a reading with Sky now. Call 908-500-1474 and visit skyofangels.com. everybody welcome welcome it's so great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on thank you so much you know a ton of Adili joining me here today i'm dr pat energy works radio the energy of acceptance how to apply acceptance in your daily life and you know i i want to say this uh, atana because this is such a powerful conversation and for those of you out there that want to connect with us today connect with atana and experience the work that he does to clear energy Okay, 1-800-930-2819, 1-800-930-2819. You know, Atana, I, I swear, I, you know, this is the topic that I think we could spend hours talking about because what you're bringing to the table is so important in, in the scheme of us manifesting the lives we want because I want to ask you this question. You and I were talking about world events during the break. But it doesn't have to be a world event that gets us in the place of resistance, right? If there is acceptance, then, uh-oh, when we're not in acceptance, Atana, are we in resistance? And what is that energy, if we can chat about that for a minute? <laughs> yeah, resistance is basically when you – have you ever been on the water – um, I mean, on uh, at a lake, for example, and you are you are in a in a boat, and you are you being just in a little paddle boat, or even just close to the shore. And whenever you want to grab something that's actually floating in the water, and you grab at it, and you splash into the water, you just create more ripples that push whatever you're desiring really further away. So every time you grab at it, and you're just falling just an inch short. <laughs> that wave pushes whatever it is that you want actually further away. And that's, that's creating a resentment in some way that pushes us actually further away. Acceptance would be waiting that the uh, current or that the, the water flow or the wind brings it 
closer to the shore, or you would basically start to create something like a like a current that brings it towards you. Now, when you go into acceptance, first of all, you have to understand coming to this planet into incarnating into duality, positive and negative, means we are constantly being challenged by either one. You know, sometimes we can't handle the positive, sometimes we can't handle the negative. Whatever uh, we are exposed to, we're constantly being asked to expand. So acceptance is being starts on a very high level. The acceptance level that we had when we came to this planet is what we need to plug into. We need to understand, first of all, what commitment made us, what contract made us even come here. That level of agreement that we had, of acceptance, is what we need to plug or remind ourselves back into. And from that level... It's like, hey, from that level, I know this is like, this is planet Earth. There's all kinds of things. Right now, in this moment, there's people dying on the other side of the planet, in Africa, in wars, everywhere. And, um, and, and people dying and passing from disease or just because of old age. But there's a constant transformation that's happening on the planet. And on the other side, a lot of beings are incarnating, are born and given birth to every second. So that's just a fact of being here in this duality. And that acceptance level, we do have to have that life and death is connected to this duality. Now, does it have to be? Who knows? You know, is there like an eternal life that you can live here on the planet or that you, that you can plug into in terms of living forever? Who knows with technology and awareness where that's going to go? But at the moment, if you look at this, There is two realities here when you come to the planet. People live, people die. People are born into this planet and people pass. How? That's a whole nother story. But that's a pretty high level of acceptance. Once you realize that, the second would be, I have to breathe here in order to exist. It has certain bodily functions I have to do in order to be here on the planet for now. Maybe in a in the future we have supercomputers where we download our whole system onto and you don't have to have this anymore and you can just have this in a crystal chip. Who knows? But right now, these are some parts of the realities and that acceptance will help you to ease and understand daily life functions. It's not like we're having a soft life we're living. This is a hardcore life we're living. We have to be we have to be awake and hardcore alert all the time because we are dealing here with an 18-wheeler that we're driving here to the universe. <laughs> and it's not like, oh, no, it's... I know. I mean, what I think you're talking about is it's like we don't really understand that we have an 18-wheeler. We don't really get that. And so what is the 18-wheeler that we have? Um, How do we do that? How do we get control of it? How are we managing it? Well, let's take a short break. And when we come back, we'll be back with the Tana and we'll be connecting to all of us here. The question really is... Uh, is that, listen, what are we driving? What happens when we have disappointment show up? What happens when we have things that show up from our past that we don't even know about, that we're triggering? What is the energy of acceptance that will so free us, free us from the bondage of ourselves? And what is it about patience and, and impatience, both? that Atana works with to help us thrive in all aspects of our lives. You know, when we come back, we'll be talking about this. And what are the words that most people dread hearing? What are those words? How do they create a flood of resistance that helps us end our persistence? Get ready for perseverance, acceptance, and all of the joy and abundance you can muster because Atana's is in the house. Stay tuned, everybody. We'll be right back.
in to Sheer Alchemy with Leslie Fontaine on TransformationTalkRadio.com and get ready to stir up your passions, identify your blocks, and shift into an entirely new existence. Leslie Fontaine is a transformation catalyst and clairvoyant who uses her intuitive and energetic gifts to catapult listeners into living the life they were born to live. Whether it's shifting from scarcity to abundance, from emotional pain into joy, or from illness into health, Leslie will help you step into the true essence and power of all that you are with the help of the Ascended Masters and Archangels. You will not be the same. Visit TransformationTalkRadio.com for show dates and times and LeslieFontaine.com to say yes to explosive abundance. Are you ready for a radical shift in your way of being? Are you seeking a more deeply connected and fulfilling life? Awakened Living Radio is a show dedicated to helping you embrace a life filled with profound peace, connection, and happiness. T.J. Woodward is passionate about helping you find your clarity, balance, and purpose. Join co-host T.J. Woodward and Dr. Pat Basile on the first Monday of every month at 11 a.m. Pacific Time for Awakened Living Radio on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Join the Pacific Northwest EFT Tappers at the 6th Annual Tappers Gathering, March 19th at Bastyr University in Seattle. You will learn EFT applications, forge a strong community, and share healing stories. The event raises money and awareness for EFT tapping scientific research. Net proceeds go to our 501c3 nonprofit to further prove the efficacy of EFT. Bring your cards and information for a fun and inspiring day of networking. Visit nwtappersgathering.com or call 360-661-6877. Hey, everybody, this is Dr. Pat. Many of you have heard me talk about the Lyme disease epidemic going on right now in the world. I want to tell you about my friends at Results RNA. They have now created an entire Lyme support system for immune system support, detoxification, rejuvenation, and neurological healing. Please visit ResultsRNA.com to learn more. And for first-time orders, you'll receive a special 10% discount. All you have to do is type in Dr. Pat at checkout. Get into it for 2016. Do you want more prosperity, clarity, energy, and balance in your life? Join Lynn Brown now through March for one of her amazing workshops, each focusing on a key part of living your best life. For more information and to register for one of these amazing workshops, visit lynnbrownevent.com. That's lynnbrownevent.com. And get into it this 2016 with Lynn Brown. Wow, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's so great to have Atana joining us here today. And as I said before, phone lines are open. We would love to hear from you. You know, Atana works with people all over the world because, you know, what he has been called to do is to help us understand, you know, what self-healing is about, you know, how we can be supported on our spiritual journey. You know, what about energy, energy and business, personal growth? How about attracting that soulmate that you might want, clearing and preparing the space that we're living in, and then working with and understanding that there are crystals and so much more that we can get help with. If you're like me, sometimes you don't even know what you don't know and you can't see what's right in front of you. And he and I were talking about that. You know, today's show is the energy of acceptance. How do we apply acceptance into our daily lives? And this is what we're talking about. You know, Atana, um, I want to just make sure everyone's got the got your website. But also, would you tell them about the One Mint recordings? Because this is something that is so important to have the tools to help us. And it's right in front of us again, right? It's like right here in front of us. All we have to do is take that step. So please give us some information about that. And then we'll get right back to acceptance yes uh, thank you uh, Pat you uh, can imagine these recordings uh, that I do in the one men's they are very first of all they're very powerful they're they're very much um, streamlined to adjust your whole system back to its main 
accelerated function and um, and expansion. So whenever you go into an um, into a one man, you are there in person, or even dial into the phone or listen to the recording. They are so powerful. They activate your whole energy system. I I basically tune in what needs to happen in that moment and really for all time. And I'm going to systematically to the system and clear it, purify it, and see what is needed at this point and what is really needed in general for us to be functioning in our in our best or full potential. And everything that is suppressing or interfering with us being in our full potential, I consider that. And whatever is present and whatever whatever energy in in client comes in that needs to be addressed, I have that I have that like addressed right away. So whenever people listen to the one man, even to the recordings after the one men's are done in person or even on the phone at at the simultaneous time, afterwards, even a week or two weeks or even a year afterwards, I still get people having the most amazing experiences where their energy field is going back into expansion. They're ridding themselves of limitations. They're ridding themselves of dysfunctional patterns. And they are so powerful. They come so systematically in that they're really taking care of whatever needs to be addressed in that moment. And you can look in the library of the one men's. There's so many one men's in there that you can pick on. One is streamlined more towards prosperity, one more clearing of your lineage energies and so on. And if you if you are really interested to accelerate your transformation, go to the one man recordings. They're going to help you accelerate. They're going to help you maintain your consciousness and your awareness. Not where you just have an insight once a week, but where you can artificially, literally keep yourself on that high level every day. And you can replay these one mans And once you once you get to the to the place where you can maintain that frequency, it's going to be so easy for you to go to the next level. And they're going to be really amazing. I don't want to call them stepping stones, but they're going to hold the space so that you can go into your full expansion. Oh, I love it. I want to talk to you about full expansion and acceptance. I really do. I mean, you know, I've talked about this before, Atana, but I haven't really talked about it much with the listeners. Um, you know, there's this rule in media, and I want to talk about it for a minute. Because it's a rule that I am choosing not to accept. <laughs> mm-hmm. Isn't this weird? Uh, I can only do this with Atana, folks. I'm just telling you. Something happens when I get on here with him or when I work with him one-on-one. So here, here is where we are. I live in this world supposedly of media and radio, which has rules. Mm-hmm. And some of the rules, if you watch them and you listen to people on radio and television in the mainstream, is that you don't really talk about who you are. You don't share stories about who you are. You don't. And you certainly don't share disappointments. What did it take, Oprah, 15 years to talk about her past, right? But one of the things that I'm learning along the way in now my 13th year of doing this is that if there's something that comes to the forefront that I can share to help somebody out there – whether you're in Seattle or you're in Rhode Island or you're in Alabama or you're in Brussels or Germany, and now we're getting emails from, you know, Russia and, uh, you know, uh, Dubai. I'm not even sure. You know, mm-hmm. if you're listening, there's a level of authenticity that Atana helps us get to. And here's what it is. You know, when – listen – when I applied to sco- to go back to school in 1990, I sent out 25, uh, what do you call them, Matana, applications. Uh, I Right? My GRE scores, I'm not even going to tell you folks what they were. <laughs> but I had a level of, of, of fearlessness and knowing that transcended them. But as each of the, the letters came back, Atana, each of them saying, nope, not us started to wear me down but I didn't give up Mm -hmm. and when I did give up when I had that moment where I did give up I had a really my best friend step in and hold the faith for me so can you talk about acceptance and what we talk about in society as failure Mm -hmm. because this is I think one of the most powerful 
powerful things that are showing up right now because we have accelerated expansiveness. So, Atana, sometimes things don't work out like we think. Yes, <laughs> yes. And there is a there is a an, another part to it. Oh. It's really it's it's really like um, similar like Bruce Lee said. You know, be be like the water, not like the vessel that holds the water. <laughs> and so when you go into that flexibility, if we have a mindset how it should work out, and we have that pre-ordained idea how it needs to work out, so that our ego feels the best way about it. And it's not about how we feel it should be. It's about how we get there. And um, there's there's certain ways how God in the universe uh, creates miracles. Um, these are like you know when you when you similar like when you stuck with a with a wooden uh, staff into the ground and and you you found a spring that's gonna go for the next couple thousand years. It's it's more. It's more get into this flow that what would be, what is the best way to get there? Not like my way, how I feel it and how I see it should be the only way how to get to the goal. And that's the, that's the limited acceptance that we put into that image. There's many ways. There's, there's uh, you know, in the, in the past, uh, people would say many, ro- many roads lead to Rome. See which road needs to be taken in order to get to the goal that we have in mind, and there can be there can be very miraculous, there can be very mundane, there can be very special, but they can be very simple or complicated. Now, what we need to be doing is being open to see which way wants to be taken, not like, oh. This is typically how it should be, so let me do it that way. No, it's it's like even if there's a system in place that has not considered you, you are so special that your way has to be created. Your path has to be pioneered first so that there is a road for you because nobody else like you ever lived before. Now, if one size fits all, that's great. If you get away with like one you know, of the universal sizes and you just can't of get away with it, perfect. But if you if your feet or your hands or your head is slightly different than others, you will have to have a, a, a special a size fit fit to you. And that's not a bad thing. It's like it's being considered a detour or complication, but it's not because you're so special. You deserve the very very best in life and so your road how you get to your goal has not yet been created because you are so unique so you are so amazing that nobody else like you ever lived before so why would there not be a new path have to be created for you atana i'm with, i'm going to skip this next break because we have a lot to talk about um you know i i uh I, I've talked about a number of different things in the 13 years doing this. And I find myself, as many, I get emails every day from our listeners and from people I don't even, I, I honestly don't even know how they're listening. And, you know, uh, we are getting ready to launch our crowdfunding campaign to raise funds. And I wanted to share this story with you, Atana, because you did some work with me personally. And I have not been able to talk about what the effect of that has been. But Mm -hmm. being open and aware is something that has been so amazingly different for for me over these past couple of months. And I was talking with a friend of mine the other day, and she was talking with a friend of hers who has a beautiful initiative that is requiring funding across the, the country. And in the conversation, she's talking to this woman about the things that are going to happen. And all of a sudden, out of that comes, wow, what if TransformationRadio.fm could be our way to market things? And by the way, what if we could donate close to a half a million dollars? And I thought to myself, is that for real? Now, listen, this is me now, Atana, getting into this place of how could something like that be that good? And I wanted to ask you this. 
how serious is it of a dilemma that we have this year, not just me, not just you, but the people listening to this, how big is this dilemma that we have to accept this accelerated point of expansiveness? What is our greatest challenge to getting from whatever that is that creeps in there in that hot second right there to embracing all of the juiciness? Mm-hmm. First of all, it's the the part of us that has to be open to receive that, and we we are we are pre-programmed by looking back into our memory of what we could receive so far. So even if we are receiving something, if we're being asked to receive something that's bigger than whatever we received before, it will mess with our experiences in the past, and we'll we'll try to limit them back. So when we go into accelerated expansion, we're dealing with um, limitation ultimately. So whenever we are looking, when we ever we're confronted with accelerated expansion, what it needs to live, it needs to feed off limitation. It literally eats limitation, and it's almost like the little Pac-Mans. Have you ever see, played a Pac-Man game? So. Whenever we go into expansion, it feeds off limitations. So all of your limitations will come up so they can feed the expansion. They can feed and accelerate the expansion. And so all the limitations will come come up. All the inadequateness will come up. And because we are confronted with that, we are feeling we are feeling literally more limited than actually accelerated. So when we are in an accelerated state we're actually feeling more limited. And that's what people call a healing crisis. Whenever you're detoxing, your system is flushing the toxins into your system to later flush it out. And that is a healing crisis. Literally 90% of the people at this point are in a healing crisis without really even knowing it, emotionally, energetically, mentally, even spiritually, even physically. And their body's doing even stuff. And you, you're looking at your body and wondering, what the heck is my body doing right now? I, I, don't, I have never experienced that. You know, and people are going to symptoms like flu symptoms, like cleansing their system is, is flushing, the, you know, and, and the liver is cleansing and, and so on. A lot of the experiences we have right now is really go into the acceptance. Then when you go into the acceptance, you're really supporting your system. Go into the acceptance, it's okay. Right now, everything in this moment is okay. Give yourself a moment of peace, of healing, even if the, the media is right now flooded with uh, catastrophic uh, uh, messages. Send What you can send is unconditional love to the places, to the people. But do not send your life force or your energy your energy you need for your own body, for your own life. But your unconditional love, you can send as much as you want. Unconditional love you can visualize as a beam of light, and you can send this beautiful pink light into the uh, catastrophe areas, into the disaster areas, into the people that experience these horrible experiences, and and even the people who are passed throughout the violence uh, that happened. You can send your unconditional love, but do not send your life force. Your life force needs to stay with you. And that's the difference between getting drained and staying in power. When you are, when you are giving your power away, then you are actually feeding these events. So you don't want to be a, a, a tool for these destructive experiences and destructive people. You want to be or if you want to be a tool, you want to be a tool for the greater good, for the healing, for the love, for the for the oneness. But anytime you send your life force away, what happens is you get drained. And when you get drained, your chakras have to spin to generate it back. So you keep your life force. Unconditional love you can access. Unconditional love you can send. And you can activate that. So when you get into an acceptance... That's an acceptance of of systems. You accept, you understand, you accept that your life force is for yourself. You understand that unconditional love is something very universal, very spiritual, and very powerful. We know now that prayers are so powerful that they can change the frequency of an area. 
So you can send a healing prayer. You can send. You can do your own energy work on that piece of land, wherever or on this planet, wherever these events happening. That's an acceptance because you know about the systematic of how things are and how things work. So when we there's different levels of acceptance because there's different levels of consciousness how you know things are, and if we are if we are um, seeing this from a two year old or three year old or six or ten year old version of our eyes, it's gonna be probably different than when you look to the eyes of a twenty year old, thirty or forty or fifty year old person because there's much more understanding that comes with it or um, expansion experiences that come with it so we have a, a different understanding of how these events unfolding so acceptance is a very powerful tool how you go into understanding what can be done now failure failure is first of all not knowing how these things are working and then wondering well I did this but it didn't work out okay then mm -hmm. there's different levels of how to apply yourself if you apply yourself from from that from that uh, person that never gives up, you may get to the place where you really did everything and it really didn't work, or you haven't really you haven't really seen the uh, uh, the signs that it could have been done in a different way uh, in a first hand, or maybe it doesn't need to be done. Either way, there has to be an acceptance of it, is that going to happen in the beginning. Is there more that I can do? And does does this need to happen in this way, another way, or am I better off putting more energy into another project? So that flexibility has to be there too. What doesn't mean that you're giving up on the other one? Maybe it's not the right time yet. Sometimes, sometimes, and I often met people in my life and still do, they are so many years ahead of their time where the world is really not ready yet for them. And yeah. even with the inventions that they have, they are like rather being locked away somewhere instead of being actually used, utilized to support humanity. Just look at Nikola Tesla. You know, he was like, yeah. everyone, let's have free energy. No, <laughs> that's not the time for it. I'm right. sure some sooner or later that time is going to come. Uh, but, exactly. You know, so, I mean, but this is really, you know, isn't this the conversation about patience and in impatience as well? Because when I'm listening to you talk about this and three things come to mind really quickly, right? One is I've been watching the backstory to the movie Carol and what a phenomenal movie that is and watching and listening to the interviews of the backstory. There's a very good reason that movie didn't get done 20 years ago. The second thing that I'm really struck by is what I didn't say was that, yeah, I was rejected by every school except one. And I was put on the wait list for that school. And do you know what happened because of that? I was able to pack up, move to Seattle, right? Mm -hmm. uh, spend some time here, build relationships here way back. And that wouldn't have happened. And so this had become this that was an opportunity even though all of the schools said no and I waited a year to, to go to Claremont in California. The point was, wow. I moved to Seattle. How can you help us, Atana? And how does, you know, the one mint and the tools you have, how, how, how can we get to the place of knowing that it's really okay? Very, very simple. One of my major work is in allowing your system to be in the best place it can be in this moment. Not tomorrow, maybe tomorrow too, not yesterday really, but now in this moment. And when you really activate your full potential in this moment, everything is fine. If you activate your full potential and you remember that you are really not under pressure, that there's really no stress, that, there is, that you are an unlimited energy system, once you get to this place of really accepting your own um, thriving, fully expanded being, that's really when you tap into an acceptance of your full potential. When you accept your full potential and actually not, um, not go into the illusion of the separation, then what's happening automatically is you're going to experience much more unlimitedness. 
and when you look into the limitations that you have experienced, if you look at that, you're coming from an unlimited source. You are an unlimited power. You're an unlimited energy. You're an unlimited life force. And that's why a lot of the people go into exhaustion mode because they don't know that they are limited. A lot of the people don't even have that thought that they are limited, right? Because we are coming from unlimited source. From unlimited source, it wouldn't make even sense to think, oh, this is just uh, this is limited. I, I shouldn't give this because I don't know how much I have left. Realizing you're coming from unlimited source means there is more than enough. When you come with that consciousness into daily life, what you're going to experience is that you're going to have more than enough. Yeah. It's, it's going to translate that simple. But very few people come really from that place and live from that place because of the uh, experiences growing up and the programming and so on and whatever we experienced here on the planet. But ultimately, we are we are unlimited source. We are coming from unlimited source. That's our home. And whenever we go into our unlimitedness, that's when we're going to experience. That's when we're going to experience the feeling of feeling home, connected. And that's really when we bring more and more of our potential and our, of our energy to this planet. What will, on the other hand, um, you know, satisfy us much more? And that's, that's a lot of my, um, my own story is I came to this through a lot of limitations. You know? I, I realized very early on that the power that we have, in, even in our compartments as limitations we have that space available to make this the best space that we want it to be. It's the same as you have a house and you have a couple rooms that you put all that stuff in there that you don't want to see. And you have like a couple rooms, they're like cluttered with the, all kinds of things. And whenever you start deciding you want a meditation room, a healing room or a new office, you can go into these rooms, declutter them, clear them out, and you can make this whatever you want it to be. That power we have at any time. And our life is like our house. We can make this house the best house that we want it to be. Or we, we're kind of just kind of vegging in there and don't know exactly what to do now. That's the power we have in all of our actions. We can be the best person that we want to be in this moment and show up. Or we can be on autopilot where 60% is somewhere else in another galaxy and 40% is, is moving uh, on autopilot to this uh, planet. So the, the ultimate is bringing all of our intention, all of our energy to this planet where we say, I'm now giving myself permission to call all of my power back into my life and I'm going to make this life my best life so far. That power we have. And so all the experiences are going to be in that direction, going to be geared towards first we're going to see the limitations where we didn't show up. Then, after a while, we gain traction. And once you get a momentum, you get the avalanche rolling. All of a sudden, you have to do less and less and less to show up because you're already so much present energetically. When you're present energetically, you become magnetic, more of consciousness will come to you, and more and more of the people around you will recognize that you become present. So, and they want to be a part of that. Yeah. And, you know, isn't it really part of what we talked about earlier today in looking at, okay, how is it that we get to show up in the world? You know, what can we do? What can we say? And what can we become? Atana, thank you so much for you. all that you're doing. And thank you so very much. One last question. Please give out your, your website uh, again. And what's your personal message for today? My website is Atana, A-T-A-A-N-A, -A -A method, atanamethod.com. And you can um, you can click there on the on the one mens and download the one mens and the um, or or session if you are, are interested in changing something specific. And my message is really truly go into the depth of your of our beings at this moment, where we go into 
the acceptance of the duality of life, just of the duality, so that we can embrace oneness when it's going to happen. Mm. Wow. Atana, thank you so much for today, everyone. We're going to take a short break. I'm Dr. Pat. For more about us, go to the drpatshow.com or go to transformationtalkradio.com. For those of you that are emailing me, I will say it yes. Uh, our network will be launched here. We uh, are zooming in on an exact date, but you can go to transformationradio.fm and take a look at what is about to happen. Thanks, all of you. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. The preceding audio was via a Skype call. 